Welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. This is Andrew Kraft, a 39-year-old felon who overwhelmingly lost a bid for the New Mexico State House as a Republican, paid for four men to shoot at Democratic lawmakers' homes in recent months, including one house where a 10-year-old girl was asleep. That's according to police. You're looking at video of this individual being taken into custody. His name's Solomon Pena. He posted photos of himself online with Donald Trump campaign material. He's one of dozens across the United States where people have threatened and in some cases attempted to carry out violence against members of Congress, school board members, and other election officials. Officials are accusing Pena of paying $500 to four men to shoot at the houses of Democratic lawmakers. He went along for the final drive-by, his gun jamming as bullets ripped into the bedroom of the girl. That's according to police. The criminal complaint against the self-proclaimed MAGA King describes how anger over his landslide defeat in November led to attacks at the homes of four Democratic lawmakers in New Mexico's largest city. We're going to uh, keep some of this video up. I'm going to be joined right now uh, over the phone uh, by someone uh, who knows some of these uh, prominent Democrats in the city there whose homes were targeted. Uh, in, this is Eric Olivas on the phone, Bernalillo County Commissioner. Uh, sir, do you have us? I do. Thanks for, thanks for having me here. I wish you were under different circumstances. Yes, if our viewers are just getting up to speed on this story, um, what exactly happened there? And how is this, uh, you know, faring in the community there? You know, this actually started with uh, a couple of my colleagues, Commissioner Adrian Barboa and Commissioner Debbie O'Malley were two of the first targeted elected officials here. And so uh, at that time, I was a, a um, commissioner elect. I had just been elected in my first term. Um, and so it was, it was really a, uh, a disturbing time to be taking office, and, and it was especially disturbing for my colleagues. Uh, commissioner Barboa was ripped through her living room about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. She had just been in there an hour before that playing with, uh, with her grandchild. So, you know, this was disturbing on a, on a personal level, and I, and I think from a political perspective, it, it was just uh, and, and continues to be a really trying time to be in this line of work. Do you know Solomon Pena? Have you ever met him? Uh, no, I've, I've never met him, never heard of him until he was arrested. Okay, so obviously he ran for uh, a House seat uh, in the legislature there. Uh, he lost quite overwhelmingly. Um, give us a sense, uh, how is this faring in GOP circles as well? I know you yourself identify as a Democrat, but um, are, are they speaking out about this? You know, I've actually been been really heartened by some of the responses I've seen uh, from the state party and, and some former elected officials, former Republican elected officials uh, that have condemned this kind of, of political violence and, and behavior. And I think that, that uh, that's a positive message. As a Democrat, you know, I think that regardless of what party you're, you're in, I think that we all have to be civil and we have to settle our political differences through the political system, winning elections and taking votes and, and uh, implementing policy, not by targeting people with, with weapons and violence. Yeah, how does the community move past this and move forward? Uh, are they still kind of <laughs> grappling with, with the shock of this? I mean, uh, this is, you know, homes of your colleagues who were targeted by this, uh, you know, quote unquote, sore loser. He's now in custody. Um, have you heard from them? How are they doing? You know, I think I think people are are obviously still in shock. I mean, you know, we had a, a state senator whose daughter's bedroom had bullet holes through it in the middle of the night. Um, I mean, I don't know how you recover from some of this stuff ever, really. But I think that you know, I, I really have a lot of respect for my colleagues that are they continue to do this work, important work, and, and I think we all do it for the for the right reasons, regardless of which party. We're all here to, to try to make our community a better place. And, bring our values and our ideals to, to make our community a better place. So I think that, uh, I think my colleagues are, are rightly so shattered and shaken and scared, but I think that, that we're going to continue to soldier on because the work that we do is important work for our community. Uh, and Commissioner, do you have any more, I guess, pieces of information you want to know, uh, you know, what led authorities to this? What questions do you still have about this story? You know, in, in general, I'm just, I'm really pleased that, that our law enforcement partners worked so well together. We, we use technology, we use partnerships between our, our county and our city, our state, 
and, and our federal partners. Uh, so really, I'm, I'm very heartened by the fact that we saw such a, a, a robust and, and strong response here and, and a good example of cooperation. And I, I really just hope that, that our law enforcement partners continue to be supported and, and continue to, to work together in other efforts to tackle crime across our community. All right, uh, sir, we appreciate your time uh, and we'll keep in touch if there are any more developments uh, in this case. Uh, Bernalillo County Commissioner Eric Olivas, we appreciate it. We'll talk again. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good night. Okay, and uh, right now, though, we do want to play uh, a press conference for you from law enforcement officials uh, in Albuquerque, from the Albuquerque Police Department, uh, announcing this arrest just yesterday. Obviously, to announce uh, a key arrest in the, the case with uh, the shootings at local elected officials' uh, residences over the past two months, uh, I'm going to let uh, Chief Medina kick things off. So I thank everybody for being here uh, today. I want to thank all of our uh, legislators, our county commissioners, and everybody else that has been affected by this for their patience and understanding during this time as we sought justice uh, for them. Uh, earlier today, uh, the Albuquerque Police Department SWAT team uh, took Solomon Pena into custody uh, in reference to these shootings, and uh, it is believed that he is uh, the mastermind that was uh, behind this and that was organizing this. Uh, this is a story about uh, partnerships, working together, utilizing technology that got us the results uh, that we needed in order to clear this case. Uh, we talked about it last week. Uh, one subject had been taken into custody. Uh, that subject was taken into custody approximately one hour after the shooting at uh, uh, Senator Lopez's home. Uh, it was unknown that this individual was involved uh, in any type of crime. Uh, Bernalillo County Sheriff's deputy pulled the individual over, took him into custody, and tagged a firearm into custody. And I, that's where the technology and the advancements and our partnership with uh, alcohol, tobacco, and firearm, ATF, come into play. Uh, it was within days that we got a hit that uh, that firearm recovered that day matched the firearm that was uh, used in the Lopez shooting. I also want to thank the field officer who quickly put those shell casings that they found on the street into an evidence bag, tagged it in, and got it to the evidence lab that enabled us uh, to move forward. Uh, over the course of the last couple weeks, the investigation went forward, and uh, Deputy Commander Hartsoff will be giving some details to the exact uh, way that it all rolled out. But I want to thank our partners at the FBI. I uh, want to thank uh, Mexico State Police uh, for their assistance, especially today with the SWAT situation uh, and their assistance from their SWAT team. Uh, Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department for that first initial traffic stop and also helping us with dignitary protection over the past few weeks. And uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office and the DA's Office who were there every step of the way making sure that we had everything we could uh, to charge uh, these individuals. I'll let uh, Dip, uh, Acting Commander actually uh, Hartsoff get a little bit into the details, but very grateful that we were able to uh, get this individual into custody and that we were able to hopefully bring a little bit of uh, relief uh, to those that were affected and all of our lawmakers, especially with uh, the state legislature starting tomorrow. So thank you. Hi. Thank you, Chief Medina. Uh, my name is uh, Commander Kyle Hartsock uh, over our Investigative Enhancement Division. Uh, and as Chief pointed out, it was a multitude of different technologies that helped us investigate essentially four drive-by shootings in a very quick amount of time and develop at this point that five persons were involved inside this conspiracy. Um, the evidence that we have is not only firearm, but it's also from cell phones and electronic records, surveillance video, and uh, multiple witnesses inside and outside of this conspiracy that have helped us weave together uh, what occurred. Um, what our investigation shows and will be outlined in a criminal complaint that you guys should get a copy of tonight is that after the election in November, Solomon Pena reached out and contracted someone uh, for a, 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 an amount of cash money to commit at least two of these shootings. The addresses of these shootings were communicated over phone, Within hours in one case, the shooting took place at the lawmaker's home. Uh, the persons doing the shootings uh, were still investigating if they were even aware of who these targets were or if they were just conducting shootings. 
um, but the shootings took place. Uh, on the last shooting, we now have evidence too that Pena himself went on this shooting and actually pulled the trigger on at least one of the firearms that was used. Uh, again, the Bernalillo, Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department ended up pulling that car over approximately 40 minutes after the shooting occurred in APD's jurisdiction. During that search, two firearms were recovered, and at least one of them has been a direct match to the shooting that had just taken place. The driver of that car was Jose Trujillo. Um, the investigation is still ongoing. Um, we're still doing more warrants and interviewing more persons. We know we're not at the end yet but we did uh, place uh, Mr. Pena under arrest today um, as helping orchestrate and participate in these four shootings, uh, either at his request or uh, he conducted them personally uh, himself. Uh, that's the only update I have investigatively right now, Chief. I'd say before we do questions, uh, the mayor can say a few words of the U.S. Attorney and District Attorney. Thank you so much, uh, Commander. And, you know, first and foremost, of course, I want to also thank all the entities that were involved in the, making sure that this individual and the associates that we know of so far are going to be held accountable in our judicial system. And first and foremost, that they are now arrested and in custody. I know for us, you know, APD essentially discovered what we had all feared and what we had suspected that these shootings were indeed politically motivated. And that has basically been confirmed by this investigation. This individual was actually a candidate for office against a Democrat House member just in November. And so you'll have uh, all the information available on him. But this situation today, I think obviously points out that these shootings were orchestrated, they were dangerous attacks, not only to these individuals, which is personally the most terrifying for them, but fundamentally also to democracy. That is why this is so terrible. This type of radicalism is a threat to our nation and it has made its way to our doorstep right here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. But I know here we are going to push back and we will not allow this to cross the threshold. Today, APD and our partners in law enforcement have helped restore safety by apprehending these dangerous criminals. And we're grateful for their work and the partnering agencies who were able to do this, and also for the technology investments that help us put this case together in very short order. I wanna thank them all for working around the clock and also for being able to give a sense of security to our legislators and to our community as the session starts tomorrow. I hope personally too our legislators can breathe a sigh of relief. They can go back to focusing on the legislative session. I also know that fundamentally, at the end of the day, this was about a right-wing radical, an election denier who was arrested today, and someone who did the worst imaginable thing you can do when you have a political disagreement, which has turned that to violence. That should never be the case. Differences of fundamentals in democracy are going to happen. Disagreements take place. We know we don't always agree with our elected officials but that should never, ever lead to violence. And here in Albuquerque today, at least we are holding these individuals accountable for doing just that. With that, Gilbert, I'll hand it back to you. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Or, over to you. Sure. Are you asking?